All right, solving exponential logarithmic equations. Now, this is probably some of the stuff we're going to need when we do these financial problems that we're going to talk about and, and the, the Crescent Little kind of stuff. But, you know, we don't always go into the background of Mr. Creswell and I, but no. uh, have, yeah, can you find Mr. Creswell? <laughs> it's like, where's Waldo, the doof with the hat on? Uh-huh, uh-huh, and there's his brother right there. Look at that. What? what yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, notice I'm not even up there yet. You guys were all <laughs> celebrating. I wasn't even there. But Mr. Croswell is one of my state champions. So state champion logarithm solver as well. All right, go for it there, senor. Okay, so I, I've got to find a way to get the this x out of the exponent. So I'm trying to solve this stupid thing for x. I think one way I can do it is take the log of both sides. I think that if I take the log of the left side and the log of the right side, just like any equation when I do one side, I gotta do the other. It's bothering me, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Log of 28. And then, what happens to this x there? Where does it go when, you, when, you, when that happens? Well, you could bring this x oh, out in right. front. Okay. Right, you can bring right. That was one oh, property okay. you taught us. Yeah. You can bring the x out in front, and that's why you do this. This log, anytime there's an x in the exponent, I take the log of both sides. Okay. Cool. So the x comes out in front here. And then uh, it's gone from the top. And then I can divide both sides by log of 5. Because remember, log of 5 is just a number. Divide by log 5. And then I'm left with x equals this mess, which I think. Log 28 divided by log 5. Is that what you'd like me to do? Yeah, let's uh, do that. Log 28 divided by log 5. So we'll go log 28 divided by log 5. Oh, you know what? You forgot your prince. Son of a bee sting. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Log 28, finish the parenthesis, divided by log 5. Shame on me. At least we caught it. So 2.07. I don't, I don't think I would have gotten 2.07 by doing guess and check. 5 raised to the 2.07. Well, we knew it was about 5 squared, because 5 squared is 25, mm -hmm. so we, the 2 sounds reasonable. But All right, so let's crank it up just a little bit here. Oh, my. Oh, my. And let's add some more guck in there before we get going. Um, I've got 3 times this ugly thing equals 81. Now, I would personally get the 3 out of there first, because I don't know what to do with that. So... It's being multiplied by the 4 raised to the x over 3. So I'm going to divide that by 3. Well, I got a fat pen. Did you see that? That's uh -huh. Fat with a pH. What's 81 divided by 3? 27? 27. Okay. Well, that's cool. I think my pen is a little too fat. Now, I've still got this x up here is in the exponent. And I want that out of there. Even though it's attached to the 3, I want to get that out of there. So let's take the log of both sides. Now, we could have taken the natural log of both sides, couldn't we? It, it really wouldn't have mattered. Now, this whole parenthesis gets moved out front. Well, that's exciting. Uh, brrr, so we have, oh boy, oh boy, we're going, to run out of, we're going to run out of room with the calculator, aren't we? So x over 3 is up front times the log of 4 equals the log of 27. I want to get x by itself. So I want everything else to be moved away from x. Well, why don't we move this ugly thing first? How do we move that? Divide by. Divide by log 4. Well, this is looking really bad, isn't it? So now we have x over 3 equals, we need a number for this. Log 27 divided by log 4, right? So whatever that is, log 27 divided by log 4. We're going to put that in the calculator here in a minute. Log 27 divided by, how do we get this 3, this 3 out of there? I'm dividing by 3, I think to undo that, I've got to multiply both sides. Yeah, the opposite of divide is multiply it by like that. So, so what, just so that we can see, we'll multiply by 3, we'll multiply by 3. Those are gone. So it looks like log 27 divided by log 4 times 3. Can you remember that? Log 27 divided by log 4 times 3. Log 27 divided by log 4 is then times 3. Was that it? Yep. Times 3. 
seven point whatever. I, again, I wouldn't have got that. I'm guessing check. So, are we good? You know, you, you know, you can always pause, rewind, watch it again. Yeah. I think there's great value in that. Absolutely. Pause, rewind. So X was seven point one three something like that. Is that what we're looking? Yeah. Oh my. Oh. So X is approximately seven point one three. You like my approximately in there? Little squigglies. A lot of times kids don't see that. Sorry, you aren't kids. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Unless you're having your little brother or sister watch us, which would be really kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Um, so I've got the log, and now x is in, in the base before we've dealt with it where it was up in the exponent. Um, but I think, that, I think that my same rules are still going to apply. I think if I, isn't this a base 10 here? Yeah. Assume so if, if it doesn't have yeah, that's not written. Assume we assume it's a base 10. And I think that if I took and took 10 as the base and put each side as an exponent in the 10, I think that'll cancel out my log on the left. So when all kind of I don't think I know it will. Sorry, it will. It will. Uh, I'll have x cubed and 10 raised to the second power, okay, which is just 100. Uh, and how do I get rid of a cube? Well, I think that I can take the cube root of both sides. Man, you got a lot of stuff going on on that screen, man. Okay, go ahead. Okay, x equals the cube root of 100. Is that a good answer? Can you leave it like that? I'm okay, I'm okay yeah, with that, I'm too. Yeah. Cube root of 100, yeah. I think that's a very good answer. Yeah. If, if not, punch in your calculator. Mm -hmm. Cube root of 100 and, and figure out what it is. But I think that's a good one. Um, all right, so buckle your chin straps. That's what my high school coach used to tell me in football because I was so horrible, I was going to get the bejeepers knocked out of me. Um, this one could, could knock your socks off. I think it's a good watch it three or four times, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. Um, but you're, in my class, you're going to run into a few of these. Mm -hmm. this, two also. this three, this, this divide by three should actually be down here. Is that okay? So if I get rid of that, that's the same as divide by three. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do to try to solve for x is to get rid of this, the 3 all together. So I'm going to multiply this side times 3. I'm going to multiply this side times 3. So we'll have e to the x minus e to the negative x equals 6 times 3 is 18. And um, I, I think we probably better pick, switch to a brighter color here, huh? Brighten our day. Well, e to the negative x, I don't like that negative x, so I'm going to put that down in the bottom. I'm going to say e to the x minus 1 over e to the x is equal to 18. And I'm not a huge fraction fan. Solving equations with fractions with x and x, 1 in the bottom, that doesn't really excite me all that much. So I'm going to multiply everything by the common denominator to get rid of that. So the common denominator, I believe, is e to the x. So I'm going to multiply this by e to the x, and I'm going to multiply this by e to the x, and I'm going to multiply this by e to the x. And some good things happened. These two cancel. And we're left with 1 right there. No, we no longer have a fraction, which is really good. So now let's do some cleanup. e to the x times e to the x. Remember, if the bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So that's e to the 2x. All right, and then minus 1 equals 18 e to the x. Let's get all the e to the x's on one side, so we'll bring this over by subtracting it. So e to the 2x minus 18 e to the x minus 1 equals 0. Oh, mama. Um, this is where I, I usually panic a little bit. This looks like a quadratic. We could probably use the quadratic formula, but instead of having x squared minus 18x minus 1 equals 0, it's e to the e to the 2x minus 18e to the x. So we're going to use this, this same concept to solve something with an e. If we were going to solve this one right here, we would say x equals negative b plus and minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But since we don't have an x, we've got e to the x. We're going to say e to the, e to the x 
equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's, we need to figure out what our a's and b's and c's are. I'm going to say that a is going to be a 1, b is going to be a negative 18, c is going to be a negative 1. So negative b is 18 plus and minus square root b squared, so negative 18 squared. <laughs> you having fun yet, Mr. Creswell? <laughs> minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. All right, could you zip me 18 squared real quick? Thanks. So we're going to do some cleanup in here. So we'll say e to the x is equal to 18 plus and minus square root. What was 18 squared? 324. All right, and I think we got a double negative. So what's 324 plus 4, sir? 328. 328 all over 2. All right, so e to the x equals 18 plus and minus. Could I beg you to do square root of 328? 18.11. 18.11, all divided by 2. Okay, so two answers here. Let's, let's do them. We can do them in two different colors. Um, either e to the x equals, this sure looks like it'd be 18 plus 18 is 36.11. What's 36.11 divided by 2? 18.055. 18.05. So either e to the x equals 18.05, or, or we said we'd switch colors, didn't we here? Or 18 minus 18.11 is negative 0.11 divided by 2. What is that, sir? It's uh, negative 0 0.055. Negative 0 0.055. Now, when we say solve, when, when, when we say, hey, solve this thing, we're usually looking for a value of x. Not, not what, what does e to the x equal. We're looking for a value of x. So we've got to go back and solve this equation real quick. What e to the x equals 18.055, or 0 0.05, excuse me. How do I get this x out of the exponent, sir? Yeah, yeah, normally we just say, well, take the logable sides. But since this is an E right here, I would definitely take the natural logable sides. So the X comes out front. So we have X times the ln of E equals, uh, what is the ln of 18.05, sir? The natural log 18.05. You just punch that in your calculator. 2.893. 2.893. OK, and it looks like you're rounding to two decimal places. So mm -hmm. should we keep That's with that? Stupid. Now, the cool part is, what's the ln of e? A 1. ln of e is 1. So that's, that's just 1. So x is 2.89. So there's one answer. There's one answer. Let's do the same thing down here. We want to take the natural log of both sides. So we'll go ln, ln, the x comes out front. So we have x, ln of e is 1, equals the natural log. Oh, no! Is smoke coming out of the calculator? ln of a negative number. Uh, non-real answer. Yeah, you cannot take the log of a negative number. You cannot take the log of a negative number. So th this is a equals no go. All right? So this, this answer is useless to us. So there's only one answer out of all of that. X is 2.89. So if we put a 2.89 in here and a 2.89 in there, divide by 3, we'll get 6. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That, I'm telling you, take a picture of that and put it in the yearbook. Wow!